Moloch and the sacred cow portal Kamat Henu, Hindu sacred cow, due to the multiple benefits from cattle. There are varying beliefs about cattle in societies and religions web links why is the sacred cow one of the most prominent symbols of religion. Let's find out. A question we asked previously was whether the lake of fire was in fact a type of portal. Scripture gives us the answer. 2 Kings 23.10 And he defiled Topheth, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might make his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Melech. Did you catch that? The lake of fire is indeed not the end of the story. Those cast into it pass through the fire to an entity known as Moloch, sometimes spelled Melech or even Milcom. Take a guess as to what Moloch looked like. Dot dot. That's right, another, sacred cow, symbol. Rabbinical tradition depicted Moloch as a bronze statue heated with fire into which the victims were thrown. The Phoenician god was identified with Cronus due to the parallel mytheme of Cronus devouring his children. https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Moloch now things are becoming obvious. God is trying to tell us something extremely important about all of these so-called sacred cow symbols. I think we better listen. Not only is Melech a Phoenician, Phoenix, rebirth god, scripture associates him with the Greek god Cronus, which is the same as the Roman god Saturn. Dot dot. Amos 5.26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and she in your images, the star of your god, which ye made to yourselves, Acts 7.43, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Most scholars agree that Sheehan and Remphan are what we would consider Cronus, Saturn. We now have a biblical link between Moloch, the Phoenix and Cronus, Saturn. In Greek mythology, Cronus, also known as Kronos, was the leader and youngest of the first generation of Titans, the divine descendants of Uranus, the sky, and Gaia, the earth. He overthrew his father and ruled during the mythological Golden Age, until he was overthrown by his own son Zeus and imprisoned in Tartarus. Cronus was also identified in classical antiquity with the Roman deity Saturn. https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Cronus note that Cronus was the father of Zeus who, as we learned earlier, disguised himself as a bull and raped Europa. It is said that Cronus ruled the Golden Age. The period in which Cronus ruled was called the Golden Age, as the people of the time had no need for laws or rules. Everyone did the right thing, and immorality was absent, as you may have noticed, Cronus sounds like Cronus time, and thus they were often seen as the same being. During antiquity, Cronus was occasionally interpreted as Cronus, the personification of time. There's the time loop can of worms again. Speaking of which, look what else Cronus symbolizes. Cronus is a god with a serpentine shape and three heads, those of a man, a bull, and a lion. If we connect this to the tribes of Reuben, man, Judah, lion, Ephraim, ox, and Dan, eagle, serpent, we see that Cronus is a picture of the four living creatures. Dot dot. Cronus, being the personification of time, also fits in perfectly with the standard model of particle physics and our 3D universe. Dot and our four nucleobases. Note that the eagle is associated with Zeus. Another interesting connection related to Cronus is something called the World Egg. Cronus and his daughter and consort Anank, inevitability, circled the primal World Egg in the coils and split it apart to form the ordered universe of Earth, Sea, and Sky. https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Cronus World Egg. Oh yeah, that's got rebirth written all over it. The world egg, cosmic egg or mundane egg is a mythological motif found in the creation myths of many cultures and civilizations, typically, the world egg is a beginning of some sort, and a universe or some primordial being comes into existence by hatching from the egg, sometimes laying on the primordial waters of the earth, https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash world underscore egg just look at all of these relationships. How deep will this rabbit hole go? How about all the way to the sides of the pit? See anything familiar? Meditate on that image for a bit. What does it look like? If you're not sure that's okay, we'll get there. Let's sum up what we've learned so far. 
1. In scripture, Melech, a sacred cow god, represents Cronus, Saturn 2, scripture associates these gods with time. Or more specifically, the end of time 3, scripture calls the end of time, the lake of fire, 4, scripture associates the lake of fire with the phoenix and rebirth 5, God casts the unsaved into the lake of fire similar to how children were cast into Moloch 6, the lake of fire is not the end of the story we can now begin to tie this all in with our understanding of New Jerusalem. For you see, New Jerusalem is the opposite of the lake of fire. Remember, there are two phoenixes in the Bible. One phoenix, white stone, leads to heaven, while the other phoenix, red stone, leads to hell. Likewise, just as New Jerusalem represents the tesseract portal to higher dimensions, the lake of fire represents the tesseract portal to lower dimensions. Some of you may know where this is going. That's right, Saturn and the black cube. Several years ago, astronomers from around the world were stunned to find a hexagon on the top of Saturn. Conspiracy researchers were quick to point out the fact that this hexagon looked eerily similar to a tesseract. And because Saturn and its myths were so dark and mysterious, the hexagram began to be seen as a type of portal to hell. By the way, did you know Cronus, Saturn has a son named Hades? Yeah, as in hell. But what really made this discovery over the top was how the hexagram, a well-known occult symbol, seemed to match the verses in Amos and Acts mentioning the star of Moloch. Amos 5.26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and she in your images. The star of your God, which ye made to yourselves, Acts 7.43, Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. The fact that the Bible seems to have predicted this star of Saturn is still to this day a very popular topic of discussion amongst the conspiracy crowd. This star of the god is a symbol most should be familiar with. Yeah, that one. Revelation 3, 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, as above, so below, here is the sigil for Saturn overlaid on the square and compass. Adding more fuel to the fire to this portal to hell concept is the fact that Muslims worship a black cube called the Kaaba. And sure enough, the worshippers of this religion called Islam, circle the Kaaba in a similar fashion as Saturn spinning hexagram. They the pilgrims observe rites including circling the Kaaba, which is the building at the center of Islam's most sacred mosque in Mecca. And they walk counterclockwise around the Kaaba seven times. The Hajj is a yearly pilgrimage to the Saudi Arabian city for five days of Islamic rites. Hundreds of thousands of Muslims have traveled from all over the world for this religious date. They even got the counterclockwise rotation right. Stunning to say the least. Now here is something very important. Stars are often compared to angels in scripture, however there is another meaning. Stars also represent children. This is precisely what the Star of David symbol is often stated to mean. It's literally a representation of a child, though not just any child. It is a representation of heaven joining with earth sons of God and daughters of man. Therefore the star of Moloch is in reference to a child. Another example of this would be the goddess Diana as a child of Jupiter. Acts 19.35, And when the town click had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshipper of the great goddess Diana, and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Diana's father is well known to be Zeus the bull, Jupiter. Diana was born with her twin brother Apollo on the island of Delos, daughter of Jupiter and Latona, web links the word, image, has the same meaning as, star, as we see in the Moloch verse. Dot dot. Amos 5.26, But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and she in your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves, thus the images are the stars which are the children of Moloch. This notion is further enforced by the use of the word tabernacle. We know what a tabernacle is now, don't we? The tabernacle is the star which is the child and the ovum. Jesus, who is the tabernacle in the wilderness, calls himself the morning star. Dot dot. 
Revelation 22:16. I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star, the tabernacle child, of Moloch however is not the same. In fact it is the opposite. It is the evil version. Think Antichrist and the synagogue of Satan. Apparently, when Moses was building the tabernacle in the wilderness, the Israelites were building their own version. Dot dot. Acts 7 41 minus 44. And they made a calf in those days, and offered sacrifice unto the idol, and rejoiced in the works of their own hands, then God turned, and gave them up to worship the host of heaven. As it is written in the book of the prophets, O ye house of Israel, have ye offered to me slain beasts and sacrifices by the space of forty years in the wilderness. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your god Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he had appointed, speaking unto Moses, that he should make it according to the fashion that he had seen. This time the Bible links Melech to the famous golden calf of the times of Moses. Dot dot. The scene above is from the movie Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. What is interesting about it is that the producers made the golden calf in the image of Hathor. Who is Hathor? Hathor is an Egyptian sacred cow goddess of course. Dot dot. Hathor, meaning, mansion of Horus, is an ancient Egyptian goddess who personified the principles of joy, feminine love, and motherhood. Web links hat means mansion or womb, hor means sun thus, hathor means womb of the sun or womb of Horus, Hathor later became Isis. Dot dot. So in an Egyptian goddess context, the tabernacle child would be Horus. The golden calf would then be representative of the womb. Are you getting the idea? So the question now is whether Moloch is in fact Hathor. If Hathor or Isis can be linked to Saturn, then perhaps that would add credence to this theory. We do know that Zeus had a child named Aphrodite which is the same as Venus in Roman mythology. The sister of Venus is Diana, the image that fell from Jupiter. Who else fell from heaven? Isaiah 14:12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? So let's take a closer look at that golden calf to see what we can find. Dot dot. Exodus 32, 3, And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron, Exodus 32, 4, And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. There's a lot going on in those two verses. Note that a single cow is referred to as plural. And why make a golden calf exclusively out of earrings? Out of all of the golden objects they had at the time, why would they choose earrings? Let's study the word ear in scripture to gain an understanding. Dot dot. Revelation 3.13, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, the ear is for receiving the word of God. Jeremiah 6.10 To whom shall I speak, and give warning, that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken, behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach, they have no delight in it the ear is likened to a sexual organ being uncircumcised. Mark 4.28, For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear, an ear can be seed, which is also the word of God. The book of Genesis relates seven cows to seven ears. Psalms 58, 4, their poison is like the poison of a serpent, they are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, ears are related to serpents and poisonous words. Now then, let's take a look at Hathor to see if there is a connection. Immediately we see that Hathor's ears are representative of ovaries, and inside of her ear is an ovum. Thus the head of Hathor represents a uterus or womb. Remember that the word of God, seed, goes into the ear where the ovum is waiting to be fertilized. Some say that earrings used to be worn in some cults as part of the Saturn worship. So for now, you will have to be the judge whether or not Moloch and Hathor are related. One thing is for certain. Studying sacred cows in general is revealing much to us, so let's do another. Meet Kamadhenu, the Hindu, mother of the universe. 
Kamadhenu, also known as Sarabi, is a divine bovine goddess described in Hinduism as the mother of all cows. She is a miraculous cow of plenty, who provides her owner whatever he desires and is often portrayed as the mother of other cattle as well as the eleven rudras https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash kamadhenu so if the sacred cow represents the womb, then kamadhenu represents the mother of them all. In a biblical context, Kamadhenu would be the opposite or the anti mother of us all. Dot dot. Galatians 4:26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. In other words, Kamadhenu is the Hindu Moloch. How do we know this? Because Kamadhenu is made of many gods and is therefore a very pagan idol. All the gods are believed to reside in the body of Kamadhenu. The generic cow, her four legs are the scriptural Vedas, her horns are the triune gods Brahma, Tip, Vishnu, Middle, and Shiva, Base, her eyes are the sun and moon gods, her shoulders the fire god Agni and the wind god Vayu and her legs the Himalayas, note that her horns are where her power is. Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are the Hindu trinity. Think antimatter. What about her ears? If Hathor's ears are representative of ovaries, could the ears of Kamadhenu have a similar meaning? Kamadhenu's ears are the two gods Ashvins or Ashwini Kumaras. Dot dot. The Ashvins or Ashwini Kumaras, in Hindu mythology, are two Vedic gods, divine twin horsemen in the Rig Veda, sons of Saranyu, a goddess of the clouds and wife of Surya in his form as Vivasvant, they symbolize the shining of sunrise and sunset, appearing in the sky before the dawn in a golden chariot, bringing treasures to men and averting misfortune and sickness, https colon slash slash n wikipedia.org slash wiki slash ashfins note that they symbolize the shining of the sunrise and sunset. Isaiah 14:12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? They are also the physicians of the gods, as well as horsemen, yes, like in the four horsemen. They even have a Roman equivalent as two more sons of Zeus, Jupiter, better known as Castor and Pollux. Dot dot. In Greek and Roman mythology, Castor and Pollux or Polladuces were twin brothers, together known as the Discovery web links Castor holds a bow. Revelation 6, 2, And I saw, and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow. And a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering, and to conquer, Pollux holds a club or sword. Revelation 6, 4, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword, most of us know Castor and Pollux as the constellation Gemini. Dot dot. By the way, in that very esoteric and alchemical Gemini image above, the unicorn represents Ephraim, generally depicted as an ox, and the lion represents Judah. The artist seems to be implying a sort of joining of DNA between the two. Dot dot. Castor and Pollux were often carved onto ships. The pair were regarded as the patrons of sailors, to whom they appeared as St. Elmo's Fire, and were also associated with horsemanship, street. Elmo's Fire A. Eh? Let's see what the Word of God has to say about them. Acts 28, 11, And after three months we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux, oh how interesting indeed. Remember in an earlier chapter we learned about Paul's journey and how he tried to sail to Phoenix. Acts 27, 12, And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Phoenice, and there to winter which is an haven of Crete, and leath toward the southwest and northwest Paul never made it because of something called a Euroclidon. Acts 27, 14, but not long after there arose against it a tempestuous wind, called Euroclidon, a Euroclidon is a type of whirlwind. Dot dot. Euroclidon is from the word, raging. Strong's 2830, Cluden definition, rough water, a wave, below, surge used only two times, guess which verse has one of these words in it. Luke 8 24, and they came to him, and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm, the same verse and story we saw connected to the lake of fire. Saint Elmo's fire, the nitrogen and oxygen in the earth's atmosphere cause street, 
Elmo's fire to fluoresce with blue or violet light, this is similar to the mechanism that causes neon lights to glow, web links neon lights. And just look at what else Wikipedia has revealed to us. Dot dot. Street. Elmo's fire can also appear on leaves and grass, and even at the tips of cattle horns what? The tips of cattle horns. Continuing on. During the storm, they tried using a strake sail. Acts 27, 17, which when they had taken up, they used helps, undergirding the ship. And, fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, strake sail, and so were driven, eventually, Paul admonished everyone for not listening to his advice warning them not go to Phoenix. Acts 27, 21, but after long abstinence Paul stood forth in the midst of them, and said, Sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not have loosed from Crete, and to have gained this harm and loss, in other words, because they tried to sail to Phoenix against Paul's advice, they were met with tragedy. Oops. Looks like they chose the wrong Phoenix. Because of this mistake, the ship was destroyed and Paul and the rest had to be rescued by Castor and Pollux. Remember, Gemini is the zodiac sign that comes after Taurus, Moloch, Lake of Fire. Dot dot. Get it. One more. Look what happens before they board the ship. Acts 28, 3-4, And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat, and fastened on his hand, and when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live, because Paul had escaped thee the lake of fire, judgment the people thought that God was going to kill Paul by serpent. A.K.A. R.N.A. But alas! Acts 28, 5, and he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm, Paul escaped the serpent as well. Thus, from that moment on, the people saw Paul as a god, yet again, as was seen in an earlier passage. Dot dot. Acts 14, 12, and they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker, when Paul was seen as Mercurius. Wow, there is just too much to cover here so let's wrap this up. I believe we finally have enough evidence to reveal the mystery of what these, sacred bull, cow idols ultimately represent. The bull, ox, cow, however you want to look at it, is a type of interdimensional, quantum womb, most likely representing the moment of conception, thus the complex and sometimes indescribable meanings, such as the rebus in alchemy. Think about it, what does a cow head look like? A uterus. Note the word of God, seed, entering into the ear, via the, horn, and St. Elmo's fire, strange isn't it? As a side note, I feel that something really needs to be said of the artist who originally drew that uterus image. I mean come on. If they didn't purposely make that uterus look like a cow, then I must be living in the twilight zone. Lol. I mean just look at her mouth and tongue. Psalm 69, 15, Let not the water flood overflow me, neither let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me, and look. Dot dot. The pit is feminine. Anyhow, in case you haven't figured it out yet, the lake of fire is a portal that leads back to the womb and reincarnation. King David revealed the secret. Psalms 139, 15, My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, you and I were conceived, or curiously wrought, in the lowest parts of the earth. In other words, hell yes. Hell, according to the word of God, is the womb. Philippians 3 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is the belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things, where did Jesus go? Ephesians 4, 9, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? The womb, lower parts of the earth is also the whale's belly. Matthew 12, 40, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, are your eyes beginning to open to the monumental cover-up that has been going on for centuries? This is not Gnosticism, and it keeps going and going. Where does Lucifer, aka the RNA, DNA strands, end up? Isaiah 14 15, Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit, yep, another reference to the womb. Remember the image you were asked to meditate on. That is called the uterus, my friend, at the moment of conception. See the sides of the pit, ovaries and fallopian tubes. The mother, moon and father, son.
the lake of fire entrance at the bottom would be the ah uh, wormhole or burning bush if you know what i mean Brimstone, sulfur, can be seen near the top as the phoenix Rosicrucian pelican. The Luciferian caduceus DNA strands are mingling themselves rather nicely, wouldn't you say? Looks like this particular king was conceived in the sign of Taurus, the bull. Look at the zodiac at the top, there's that sacred cow again. Lol. Ordo a flat chow, with the overabundance of revelations the Lord has shown us. Perhaps one day pro-choice women will think twice about passing the seed to Melech. Leviticus 18.21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Melech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord, welcome to the harsh reality of time loops and cycles of ages. Dot dot. Ecclesiastes 1.11, There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after, so, which born again option are you going to choose? Better seriously mediate about your escape route. Time is running out, 